Hey guys, it's been a while since I posted a, a hardware video, um, or at least a pickups video with new hardware in it. Uh, two reasons for that: one, I'm trying to spend less money, and two, at this point, I don't think there's any more hardware that I wish to own. Uh, a couple of exceptions, but they're mostly curiosities, um, and this is one of those. Now I'm going to do a sort of Le Bossu, uh 77 style introduction to this video here. Uh, which is to say, I'm going to talk about this item for a little while before I uh, reveal what it is. Uh, now, as you may be aware, I've bought a lot of handhelds this year. And um, I'm really starting to get into them. And some of the cooler ones are the Turbo Graphics uh, Express, uh, due to its backlight and the fact that you can run the entire back catalogue of Turbo Graphics games, which is freaking awesome. And of course, as I've shown, uh, you can it's basically got the region mod card that you can slot into it and play all regions of games. So that's really awesome as well. I've had a little bit of trouble with Game Gears, uh, but again, I appreciate the fact they have the backlight, but uh, I've got three now, and none of them work. One was given to me, one was traded from uh, A. Murphy, 245, and uh, the other one, uh, I believe I bought off eBay, and uh, they've all got problems. I uh, also picked up a Sega Nomad, which you might remember. Uh, really enjoying that. No problems with that whatsoever. It's really, really cool. Uh, and of course, the... Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101, which is just a backlit beauty. I love that thing. Uh, and I'm getting great use out of that as well. But um, on the topic of the Game Boy Advance, around about the time that came out, I believe, uh, this handheld came out that's in one of these packages. Uh, just, to, just to clarify to begin with, that is a game for the system from Japan, and that is the actual system itself. Uh, as I say, it came out uh, at the very end of the late 90s. This particular edition of it came out in 2000, and it boasts a superior LCD display uh, to its predecessor. Um, so, yeah. The only downside of this thing that I that I know of is... Um, well, two downsides, actually. The, the primary one is that the library of games for it is primarily Japanese, um, and a lot of them are RPGs, so it pretty much excludes me from playing a lot of those titles. Which is a shame, obviously. Um, and the other problem with it is, in spite of the fact it came out in 2000, it has not got a backlit screen. Which, when you consider, you know, the Nomad came out in the mid-90s and it did, and the Turbo Graphics came out even before that and it did, it's kind of crazy. But, um, we'll have a look and we'll, we'll see, likely, why that is. So what I'm going to do first is pop out a game, and, uh, you know, see if you guys can figure out what system it is, just from the game. Uh, no, in my luck, the game will probably say on it what the console is, which it you know, probably should anyway. So let's have a look. This, uh, this game from Japan, is from Japan. I got it just for a few dollars. Or yen, whatever it was. Uh, and the game is Final Fantasy 2. Let's pop that out of this nice little case. Now, as I said, these games are primarily RPGs, and they're primarily in Japanese. This one is in Japanese. Um, I wanted to pick up a game with it because I've heard uh, from a video I watched, and again, to keep going on about this page, but it was Adam's video, where he said, um, basically when you turn this system on with nothing in it, um, it doesn't turn on. So you don't know if it's broken or not. You know, And I obviously didn't want to keep hold of it for a month or something, and then you know later on find out it didn't work. So I picked this up, and uh, yeah, it's Final Fantasy 2, and if you can see right in there, it's all got nice and blurry. It's for the Wonder Swan colour. Uh, now, the first edition was just the Wonder Swan. It was put out by Bandai. The second edition was the Wonder Swan colour. What I've picked up here is something I've been looking at for a long time, and that is the. I believe it's called the Swan Crystal. So let's have a look. Swan Crystal. And it comes in a tiny little box. Uh, it's really cool, actually. But uh, let's take a look at it. So, like I say, this the Wonder Swan. The Wonder Swan Color, and then the Swan Crystal. The Swan Crystal is primarily a uh, Wonder Swan Color with a better LCD display. Like I say. So there's nothing too interesting on the box. So it's nice to see we've got everything here, including a fully Japanese manual. Um, what's worth noting, and I knew this already, is that it doesn't come with a mains adapter. So that is all she wrote. And uh, there it is. There's the little console here. And as you can see, it really is quite tiny. You basically put one AA battery there, and uh, and that's it. It runs off a AA battery. There is an extension port there. I don't know if that's for a charger or what that's for. I'd be quite curious to find out, but let's pop Final Fantasy in. 
take a look. You see it in my hand, that thing is, is pretty small. To put it in perspective, what I'll do is I'll grab the PSP Go, which is today's smallest handheld, I'd say. You see there's not a lot in it whatsoever. PSP Go is slightly smaller, obviously when you undo it it's not. But uh, yeah, this piece really light as well, but it's, it's got a good build, it doesn't feel cheap or tacky. Um, I'm not so sure, like I say, as there's no backlight for this, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but we'll give it a shot. Let's get my head out of the screen. Oh, I'm just getting full of reflection. Uh, let's have a look. Definitely going to get much out of this, but... That's a bit better. So yeah, the sound quality is really cool. Really great. Uh, what's interesting is there's two D-pads on this thing. One there and one there. I can't remember quite the reasoning behind that. I can't remember if it's because of... Um, a lot of the Atari Lynx did, where you've got it for left-handed gamers and right-handed gamers, but... If that is the case, I don't know how to switch the display around. That's quite strange. But yeah, another thing that's interesting about this is when you hit the volume button, it's basically got three or four preset levels. So it's not sort of analog control, which is really strange. Uh, let's see if we can't get somewhere with this. Okay, anyway, so far I've one hand. Yeah, what I want to do for this, obviously, is pick up some English games, but it feels really good. The D-pad feels really good. It feels really firm in your hands, and you know, it looks good. I know the backlit screen doesn't show up well on this at all, but it's really cool. And uh, I think with the early Final Fantasy games, although the story was a big a big part of them, I'm pretty sure I can blag just playing through this and, you know, enjoying the battle mode, which would be pretty cool. But um, this round me thirty four ninety nine in total and like I say it's the Wonder Swan Crystal uh, haven't had a good go at it yet I'm really excited uh, about doing so in fact just making this video makes me want to play it now so I think I'm going to have a, a bash on Final Fantasy 2 here but yeah just the controls feel so good it's just a really well made system and uh, I'll be curious to see what kind of, kind of games I can pick up for it as always there'll be uh, a new video shortly and uh, thanks for watching and 5 4 7